I'd like to spell out for you an influence strategy that you can use in your local region to gain access to information, people, and resources that you need to build wealth, period. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. This strategy sounds cringy to a lot of people because it's not something they're used to seeing. But I've had the unique opportunity to know bankers, to know wealthy individuals, to know even farmers who've used this method in order to gain influence and make changes in their community. Let's say, for example, you want to improve the regional food system. And you know in order to do that, there needs to be capital available to bankers. There needs to be capital available to farmers. If you give the money directly to farmers or you lend the money directly to farmers, you have a high level of risk. Now, remember, all of the strategic relations strategies that I talk about are about lowering your risk because risk management is my specialty. So what we're going to do in this kind of concept and what's called is called the capital leverage concept is we're going to use – our understanding of how banks make money in order to boost the revenue of a local or regional bank. Now, this particular strategy won't work with a big national bank because you wouldn't have as much leverage as someone who has more resources, more assets, uh, and more. And it's based on a concept that I've also seen used with uh, casinos. So uh, let me just share the story of a, ge- a gentleman named Jack, and he enjoyed going to casinos and resorts with his wife and spending a week and really having a good time. But he really didn't want to spend his own money. See, the thing about a lot of wealthy people is they don't want to spend their own money. They want to have the customer pay for it. They want to have the government pay for it. They want to have someone else pay for it because they know how hard it was to earn the money in the first place. They know how much risk they took. And um, this gentleman, Jack, was up in his uh, re- getting close to retirement age. He was 55 or so. And retirement age is a lot lower when you have a lot of money in the bank. But essentially what he would do is call a resort or a casino and And if you didn't know this, if you're a high roller, you can deposit money at the casino in advance of your stay in order to uh, get kind of all the arrangements together and you basically got the house's money. So they give you a little card when you get there and you gamble with the with the card that they give you. But the reason I say you have the house's money is because when you deposit, so let's say you're getting a modest room and you talk to them, look, I'm going to be doing some gambling and I like to put $10,000 on deposit and they're going to talk to you long before you offer to make a deposit about how you can give them money. Casinos are really good at you giving them money. And you say to them, look, I like, I, I like to gamble, but I want to make sure I know my limits. So I'd like to deposit $10,000 at your casino so that when I get there, we can just, you know, go out to dinner and then I can start, I can have some fun. Me and the wife want to have some fun. And they're going to ask you what kind of games do you like to play, Bob? You know, it's a really good, good, good conversation. The key to leverage here is that you're depositing $10,000 at their casino. Now the number's different for everybody. Okay, but it's not $5,000, it's not $150, it's $10,000, $20,000, $30,000. Now what happens is the casino, understanding how the casino makes money, they're going to make money on your deposit, they're going to make money when you buy meals, they're going to make money when you lose all your money at the casino. So what they want to do is make sure you have the best experience possible. So Jerry, uh, Jack was doing what is called a foreshadowing the value the other person gains in order to up the value that he gains. So again, he's booking a modest room, puts down a deposit. Now, the bank doesn't want him having a a bad – the casino, which is pretty much like a bank, um, doesn't want him to have a bad night's sleep. So they're going to give him the very best modest room at a minimum – But what always happens, and he told me this time and time again, is the casino wants him to come back next year. So he had mentioned that he'd like to come into town. He's going to get in about 3 o'clock. Him and his wife would like to sit down and have a nice dinner, and then he'd like to go get on the tables. He liked blackjack. So he shows up at the casino. If they didn't comp him a room earlier, he shows up at the casino and finds out his room has been comped. The modest rate rooms – they will comp. It doesn't cost them anything to give you a room. The room is in the casino anyway. They tend to comp the modest rate rooms. But if there's nobody in a suite and they know when he's coming in and when he's going and they don't already book that suite the day he shows up there, guess what room he's getting comped? 
See, again, this is a leverage strategy to increase your influence, to gain additional power, to get a little bit better experience than the other guy. And it's because you understand that the casino makes money by you losing money. Now, I hear what you're saying, Justin. I don't want to lose $10,000 at the bank, at the uh, casino. Uh, and and you'll, you'll find out through all my programs, I, can, I mix up bank and casino all the time because the casino is really a bank that takes all your money and doesn't give you any interest. They give you entertainment. They give you shows. Uh, by the way, you'll get comp shows out. I did this method uh, at the Lexor in Las Vegas. Very modest $5,000 deposit because, I, again, I understand not feeling comfortable wanting to give the bank, the casino, your money. And But, again, the casino is going to make interest on your money. They got a giant pool of money of all these people that made deposits, mainly high rollers, and they're going to assign somebody to you to make sure you have a good time. In fact, the person they assigned to us at the Lexor didn't want us to leave the casino because your intention is not to spend the $10,000. Jack was making a deposit for leverage, not making a deposit to to lose $10,000 in the casino. But, again, you are going to – Make the deposit. You're going to show up. They're going to comp you rooms. Now, worst case scenario is they don't comp you any rooms because they don't have rooms available. Maybe you went peak season. We can talk about that at another time. Again, you have to understand how the casino makes money. You're going to show up. They're either going to comp your room. They're going to ask you if you want to see a show. Oh, you know, Jack, thanks for showing up. I'm so glad to see you here. By the way, you had mentioned that you wanted to take your wife to a nice dinner before you... You went to play blackjack. And by the way, the casino industry practices strategic relations better than I could ever teach it. Um, You'd have to spend 100 years with me to understand the strategies that that, that you can get in a glance of of going at the casino. Um, But they're going to say, you know, you said something about wanting to take your wife to a nice dinner. And you know what? We have something going on over in our restaurant because casinos tend to have more than one restaurant. And we would just love for you to experience it and give us some feedback about the experience. And you say, well, you know, I'm just fine going over to the buffet. Oh, no, no, no. This is a three-course meal, and we like you to experience it to give us some feedback. So what they're doing with that particular strategy is they're not not, uh, trying to change your plans. They want you to be involved. They want you to go out to dinner and then come tell them how nice dinner was because telling them how nice dinner was reinforces the value you received in the comp dinner. So you're not just getting a free meal. They're not giving you a free meal. They're doing market research. So they're going to go put you in front of the fancy chef in the in the restaurant you didn't even know existed in the hotel. And it just happens to be next to the $100 blackjack tables or the $1,000 blackjack tables because they know what game you prefer. So again, I'm teaching you a strategy that you can, quote, use on the casino, that you could use on a bank. But essentially, they're going to use it on you anyway, so you might as well know how it works. So you're going to go and have a comped dinner, probably a $50 dinner, $70, $100 dinner, and they're going to check in with you and ask you how the dinner was because they want that reinforcement mechanism where you're going to say, oh, that dinner was great because it will be great. And does it cost them extra money to give you a three-course meal or in a beautiful setting uh, versus letting you go eat at the buffet? It does not cost them extra money because, again, they have a, if they have a private restaurant – and they have 30 seats and they have 28 people show up for dinner. They've got two seats that they're paying for whether there's somebody sitting in it or not. So why not comp you because you've been such a great guy to deposit $10,000 because, again, they see the $10,000. They're going to take that from you anyway. And I know you're saying I don't want to go to, to the casino and spend – you're not spending $10,000. Trust me. You go in. You have a beautiful dinner for 100 bucks. Okay, now that tells you you can lose 100 bucks at the tables and you've broken even. Ah, do you see how this works? Now, they're going to – when you come back after dinner and you say, hey, look, oh, man, that dinner was great. Uh, a little feedback is that this, the, the steak wasn't just right for me, but you know what? The chef took care of that. I had a wonderful experience. Oh, we want to make sure you have a wonderful experience. Uh, and by the way, uh, our blackjack tables are right around the corner, and they're not going to point to the $2 tables. They're not going to point to the dollar tables. They're pointing to the $100, the $1,000, whatever tables. It is up to you whether you enjoy those tables or not. Again, you get free drinks either way. But you can lose $100 at the table and you're broken even. You didn't spend any of the $10,000 because 
you would have spent the money on a dinner. Now, you might be saying, Justin, I could have got a $5 buffet over here. Again, it's not about being cheap. It's about what is your experience going to be? What is the investment you're making into your wife or significant other to to strengthen that relationship? What is it going to be like enjoying a nice quiet dinner with uh, you know the service coming out and beautiful candlelight versus standing in line at a buffet with with uh, you know a bunch of kids and a bunch of people who are tourists? You know, will this improve your sex life? Will this make a more magical experience on a holiday rather than spending additional money to gain that experience? Will you gain that experience through, again, strategic relationships? Now, I want to get through all this content and make sure you understand the capital leverage concept because what you're doing here is you're working within the constraints of how the casino makes money. So Jack does this. He has a beautiful dinner with his wife. His wife is glowing with how nice everything is and you know how nice they treated us. And Jack goes and talks to the, the manager because the manager is going to want you to come back. If, if you don't come back to the manager, they will find you and they'll say, well, how was dinner? Because again, they want that confirmation. He says, dinner was incredible. Honey, what do you think about this dinner? Oh, it was incredible. Uh, well, here's the blackjack tables. You understand blackjack's your game. Uh, come on over here on the tables. Have yourself a good time. Oh, by the way, here's your concierge. And the concierge is going to say to you, hey, if you're interested in the entertainment or anything like that, we have a number of things going on in this casino. Again, they want to keep you in the casino because they see the $10,000 on deposit and they want to take that $10,000 and put it in their pocket, but they can't put it in the pocket until you've put that little card they're going to give you in the machines. Now, there are some other strategies where you win back cash and you take the cash and you deposit on the card and, and it looks like you've got more money. There's strategies for how you manage your gambling or your, your entertainment. We're not, that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about here. But do you see how it works? The casino, who I mistakenly call the bank, wants to be, wants all the money. It doesn't cost them anything extra to put you in a nicer room or to give you a nicer dinner or to give you tickets to a show that probably wasn't sold out anyway because, again, they're already paying for the real estate in the seats whether the casino is full or the casino is empty. Now, before I close this, we're going to talk about how this works with banking and I'm going to give you a resource where you can get the full story. But can you see how this puts you in a more an elevated position? Now, me and the wife did this for um, a Lexor Hotel in Vegas, $5,000 on deposit. I think I spent $150 at the tables. I had a great time. I, I ran some slot machines. I played some table games. I took a whole week to lose that $150 because uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Here's the thing. I went home with my $5,000, but we were comp show tickets. We had better than average meals. Our room was upgraded. Um, They did not want us to leave the Lexor. We did get comp some affiliate shows, um, like a magic show and some, uh, I think I watched, there were a lot of people dancing. That's all I remember. There's some kind of musical, a lot of people dancing. It worked out really well for me from a relationship perspective, at least for the short term. It does set up some weird expectations that... um, you, you, we need to work out in a different program. But understand, if you are functioning within how the casino makes money and you understand that you're functioning in with there, uh, you can come home with the majority of the money that you started with. You're still going to spend the money on the hotel. You're still going to spend the money on food, but you're not going to spend it directly. So if you got comped, let's say $3,000 worth of value – uh, and in, in in Jack's situation, sometimes he said he would get comped uh, almost nine thousand dollars worth of value. So his rooms ended up being free. He, everything ended up being well. He was already going to spend two thousand dollars on the hotel. So he still spends that, but not on the hotel directly. You know, he dep- he he reserved his room and everything. It's already spent. But he got $9,000 in value. So he multiplied his money. Now, by the way, you don't have to pay taxes on any of these comps unless you're doing this quite a bit and you're, you're a professional gambler or you're, you're, um, you're, you know, you're winning enough to make it worthwhile. And by the way, this is not about winning at the table. This is about winning in the interaction and relationship you have with the casino. 
Now, let, let's wrap all this up. Can you see how this works? You spend $2,000, you get $9,000 in value, you go home with your original $10,000 deposit. You didn't spend the, the $2,000 directly with the casino for housing and food. You lost it at the tables, which we would have normally lost uh, if you had paid everything direct and just went to the casinos and played the game. You stay far within your budget. You leave with the original 10. Now, Jack, every year, would stay at a different casino, and casinos talk to each other, and they'd say, well, Jack stayed at our casino last year. We made $2,000 off of Jack. Okay, that's, that's good for the casino, but they see the potential of earning $10,000 off of Jack or $12,000 off of Jack. So Jack's going to a different casino if he hasn't already been called by the casino and invited back to the ones he went to originally. And now the other casino is going to try to get Jack's money and do the exact same thing over and over. So Jack upgraded his vacations. And now I only tried it once because it really does set up some weird expectations with the wife if they don't understand that you're, you're, you're comping. You know, you're, these are comps. You know, honey, we stayed in a better than average room, the suite that overlooked the strip, uh, because we were comped, not because we paid for it. Oh, well, we've got the money. You didn't you put ten thousand? No, you got. Yeah, my relationship didn't have the money matter straight, and so you have to understand that it does set up unusual expectations because it is possible that a casino is going to run the numbers and they're going to say, oh, well, he's just an average player, and you're going to have to go to different casinos in order for this to start picking up. Um, but the takeaway is, is this, this is a point of capital leverage. You have to have the cash in order to make the deposit. It triggers things in their system to show that you're a good or high potential customer. They treat you better because it doesn't cost them any more to treat you better. But guess what? This particular method works with local and regional banks. Now, see, I've been trying to to share this with you and introduce you to this concept and show you the benefits and show you with with a narrative story how easy it is to implement and give you some ideas and concepts about how you can profit from this yourself, basically spending a dollar and getting five, ten, twenty dollars in value. But guess what? This works with local and regional banks. Now, on a, on a sister podcast called Sustainable Wealth Secrets, I just recorded a program about capital leverage concept. And I go through detail about how this works with the bank. You can deposit money at the bank and then take out loans to get or get better service or to get other opportunities such as information about foreclosures and, and, you know, assets at a discount. And that's really a wealth strategy from the inside strategic relations concept of influence and power, and maybe just having an elevated experience above and beyond what other people are experiencing. This method works with resorts, casinos. It works with all kinds of entertainment opportunities, especially new casinos. Now, I'm not advocating that you go out and gamble. Again, I took 150 I basically spent only $150 on a week's worth of table games and and slot games and it is an exciting experience a lot of noise but an exciting experience and that meant free drinks and I got way more than $150 worth of free drinks um food and comps I think we even got we got comped a couple shows um we got comped the uh there's uh, there's like a little banquet area uh, that you can go to. I, of course, I didn't put enough money down to get invited to the private dining area with all the big wigs and rub elbows with all the fancy people. But I wasn't having the family vacation and the kids and the Chinese buffet people. And, you know, I, I wasn't having it. I sat in a nice restaurant where it was not chaos versus, um, you know, the, the typical buff, $4 buffet line. Um My point being is that when you understand how other people benefit, you can ride along that edge of their desires, their greed, in order to elevate your own experience. You're not going home with more money than you deposited unless you win something, which is improbable. Because the reason I keep mixing up casinos with banks is because in the casino industry, in the resort industry, their job is for you to deposit money into their their system of entertainment and never take it out again. So you're going to go in a timeshare. You're going to go in a, a vacation rental. They're going to try to get you to give that money to them and keep it there. 
Now, you've got to understand you put $10,000, $20,000, $100,000 on deposit with a casino and you keep taking it all back. They got ratios. They got computers. They do the math and you keep taking it all back. It's going to wear out. That's why you want to look for new casinos and new entertainment experiences. And by the way, they'll comp you air, air tickets. Uh, they'll comp you rooms. They'll comp you food. They'll comp you um, entertainment. Um, they can comp you air flights because I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, casinos, resorts, and other destinations actually buy giant blocks of airfares in order to make sure that every time a plane lands, the individual, and this is the psychology of this, that that individual steps off the plane with everybody going to Disneyland, everybody going to the Strip. And they do this not with their own money. They often do it with economic development money from the region because the cost of the air ticket is less than the tax value of you know, sales tax collected, um, you know, hotel rental um, taxes collected. And it's, again, it's just a money game. You have to understand how the money works. But I hope you see how this is an interesting point of influence that elevates your lifestyle, that gives you the opportunity to experience new things. It works with all kinds of resorts. Now, I want to leave you with one thing that's very important because I said that they're, they're keeping track of this and they will call you. And they will offer you stuff. Like again, you deposit $10,000. Jack would get called all the damn time about timeshares. Now, Jack liked timeshares and I'm not advocating one way or another, but he would get called all the times to hear about the new vacation spot or the new timeshare spot. There will be a time where they figure out that you're not going, you're not spending any more than you would have spent if they, you just got a regular room. And they will call you and they will say, Jack... Um, you know, you hadn't been to Atlantic city in a while and uh, we're wondering next time you're going to come back up here because we'd love to show you the new dining room. We'd love to show you the new uh, games that we've got. We'd like to show you, you know, they're going to pitch it to you. They're going to put their salesperson on the call and you have to be able with a straight face, say to them, well, Atlantic city, I really, you know, Trump towers. I really enjoyed my experience down there because they're going to ask you straight up. They're going to say, well, didn't you enjoy the experience that you had here at the Trump Towers when you were here in 1994? And we haven't seen you. It's 1998 right now. And, and we'd love to have you come back. You got to say with a straight face, look them right in the eyes and say, you know, I did have a good experience. I really did enjoy that because you're, you're confirming their, uh, their statements in order to take them off guard. And then you're going to simply say to them, but you know, your affiliates have been calling me and inviting me to other places. And, and you know, we got the reason we didn't come to Atlantic City last year is because we got out to Vegas and they treated us really well in Vegas. Now, you don't say I got comped in Vegas way more than I got comped at your place and give me more stuff. You say, look, they treat us really well in Vegas. And, you know, me and the wife are thinking about going back out there because it's a little bit warmer. And, um, you know, we, we like to go a little bit off season, but um, it, it just – it just was a great experience and the wife really, she's looking for that uh, again. And, and, you know, we might get up to Atlantic City next year, but we're not really sure. I'm going to slam my hand on the table because that's when they're going to say, well, well, no, we've got some new packages we'd like to introduce you to. You know, they're going to they're gonna up that offer. So you have to want to negotiate a little bit. It does, It's not really a hassle. It's part of the fun. You've got to practice the techniques that we talk about in the podcast and and we talk about in the coaching programs. But essentially, there will be a time where they figure out, because they do the math, that you haven't been there in a while. You haven't given them all the money they've given you. Now, they're not going to go negative on you because they know the price of a seat in a a private restaurant. They know the price of how many dollars they need to make for every seat in in a show. And they're probably going to go from premium comps to off-season comps, which is fine. A lot of business people like to travel in the off-season. Um, they are going to go and, and get you the unused rooms on the um, convention floor. Uh, so, for example, we went out to a couple conventions uh, just because we were interested in conventions. A lot of times there's unsold rooms that are then comped out. So the convention paid for the room. The hotel's comping them out, but now you're there with 10,000 convention goers. So you have to be mindful that this kind of strategy, you don't want to take advantage of it so much that they're not going to call you. You want to be right on the edge where they're still making a little bit of money off you and they like to have you around because you can't go be a pompous ass, but they know that there's competition. And yeah, sure, Trump Towers was great, but you didn't get to meet Trump. 
You know, I, you know, Trump Towers is awesome, but you know, after Trump was president, never got a chance to meet him, and he used to walk the floor, and and you know, I, I, they'll they'll arrange a meeting with Trump because it doesn't cost them anything. Oh, you know, we went out to the Luxor and it was great, but you know what? You guys were remodeling that wing and it was a little bit noisy, so we decided to go to Atlantic City the next year, and and they go, well, no, that remodel's all done, and we'd love to show it to you. So you have to understand you're not taking advantage of them. In fact, a lot of times they are taking advantage of you because they'll they'll just stop calling you if they're not making any money. Um, but that deposit is a signal of potential income to the casino and they want the deposit to be forever. And as long as you don't go there and and um, and hurt your budget, but again, if you – if you spend the ten thousand dollars you put on deposit, it just reinforces the reason why they're going to copy you in the future. It conf- it actually confirms their. So uh, l- let me just wrap up with this: If you deposit, Jack did this one time. He was on a table, had a little too much to drink, and he lost ten thousand dollars. Now the little card they give you when you run out of money stops working. Okay. So you deposit $10,000 on the little card and you're running the card. You don't back it up with a credit card. You don't back it up with a bank account. When the $10,000 is gone, the card stops working. But Jack was on a table, had a little too much to drink because they will cop the hell out of you. And he was having a good time. His wife's having a good time. His sex life was more than more than adequate for uh, for the experience that came on and he ultimately spent the whole ten thousand dollars and he was pissed that he spent the whole ten thousand dollars jack if you're listening to this man i don't mean to, to to share the story here but but guess what happened the casinos doubled up because the casino doesn't need you to spend the ten thousand dollars every time Again, remember, they're already paying for the seat in the fancy restaurant. They've already bought a certain amount of food that night. They do math like crazy, and he spent the $10,000. But what does that say to the casino? That says he's okay with spending the $10,000. Now, he understood he got comped so many times in the past that that it doesn't matter he spent the $10,000. He didn't need the $10,000 anyway by this point because he's taking vacations on pennies of the dollar. After he spent the $10,000... The casino comped him a cruise ship week, a week on a cruise ship, and another week at the hotel, the same hotel he lost the $10,000. Think about this, folks. It kind of has no downside. But again, you don't want to go you know, develop a gambling problem or drink too much in the, in the casino and make dumb decisions because he could have just as easily tied it, you know, felt like he's on a winning streak and tied his credit card to the, uh, to the table or, or done something else. And it took him a whole week to lose the $10,000. So anyway, let me just leave you with that. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations, and we've been talking about the capital leverage concept that you can use with resorts, hotels, casinos, other types of entertainment resources to elevate your lifestyle, to gain uh, access to things you didn't even know existed, but it also works with banks, which you just, we describe in another program. If you have any questions about this or anything else we cover, I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. Visit www.insidestrategicrelations.com and ask your questions. Uh, What I've been sharing with you here today is what we do for our clients. We turn business relationships into profits guaranteed. The profit that Jack gained was an elevated experience. Having a concierge, literally, the concierge will go find you shows and, and reserve tickets and stuff for you. They'll find out, they're, they're building a database of what your interests are and they want to make sure you have a great experience because they have competition. This method works when Jack was doing it back in the 90s. It works now and it'll work 100 years from now because it's about how the casino works the resort works how that they have a high capital expense and they need to use the resources anyway and finally how they think about you as a customer rather than what you think about them as an organization strategies like this transform your life and i hope you will come visit me at www.insidestrategicrelations.com to ask your questions. Become a member. We talk about this freely. I got a number of these strategies. I've been great, so fortunate to have friends and and people in power and influence, and you know, have met politicians, have met uh, people. I met Donald Trump before. He's pretty cool. Um, 
very, very business oriented. <laughs> but um, ultimately, so that you can improve relationships with your family, improve relationships in your community, improve relationships in your business so that you have the very best. It'll seem like a blessed life. It'll seem far beyond. But there's, again, balance and control and understanding how it works. And you've just got that around the capital leverage concept. Thanks for listening.